TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind us, you see it, little warning screen, just in case. And twitch.com is where you can catch the live streams, previous live streams, and be ready for the future ones, man. The username's at the bottom of the screen. And we also got Patreon, where we post five days a week, Monday through Friday. This is Skyboy, South London's deadliest district, Peckham. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Now Peckham is a district in South East London within the London Borough of Southwark. It has a reputation of being the most dangerous area in London. Even globally, Americans, Canadians, etc., who know little about the city, will be found referencing the infamous Peckham v Brixton beef. Today, I'll be discussing the history of the gangs that have sprouted from this district, their wars, and how they have shaped culture in London. The Peckham Boys Gang originated in the states of Peckham, SC15 postcode. A large area of Peckham between the town centre and Burgess Park is dominated by council estates. The main cluster is called the Five Estates and consists of North Peckham Estate, Gloucester Grove Estate, Willowbrook Estate, Camden Estate and Sumner Estate. The estates of Peckham were notorious and suffered under investment, deprivation, unemployment and crime. The area was termed Vietnam due to the level of violence there, hence the nickname Pecknar. Now in the 1990s, several of the major Peckham estates had their own individual sets. The Peckham Grove Boys, the North Peckham Boys, the Gloucester Boys, the Yellow Brick Massive, the Outlaws and the Acorn Boys. The earliest sets date back to the 1970s and are the origins of the Peckham Boys Gang. Now by the 1990s, those sets had evolved and the two main sets in the Peckham area were the Firehouse Crew and the Younger Peckham Boys, also known as Peckham Man Soldiers. Other groups of Peckham included the Yardie sets, the Sunrise Crew and the Spanglers. Collectively, these sets were known as the Peckham Boys. There was sometimes friction between Peckham sets, but it was never that deep. They were united whenever opposition tried to slide on Peckham territory. Now, Peckham's main war was with the Ghetto Boys, a gang headquartered in New Cross, controlling Lucian Borough. Their other major conflict was with Brixton. So, the decades-long Peckham v Ghetto Boys and Peckham v Brixton conflicts were some of the most longest and bloodiest gang wars that London has seen. Peckham had been notorious for gang violence for decades and this reputation continued into the 2000s. National headlines were made in July 2000 when up to nine people were shot outside the Chicago's nightclub on Peckham High Street. Dang. Six months later, wait, wait, what nightclub? Dead. Chicago's nightclub? A double shooting outside the same nightclub. The nightclub was shut down soon afterwards. Gigs refers to the nightclub in the 2000 track titled Greasiest Freestyle. Don't think I'm coming here to rave if you see me round the back, big strap inside Chicago. Now on the 27th of November 2000. Why Chicago's gotta be the deadliest club in the area? Dang. An incident occurred in Peckham that shocked the entire nation and made international headlines. At 5.41 p.m., a 10-year-old known as Damiola Taylor, who was a Nigerian immigrant, set off from Peckham Library to walk home. As he approached the North Peckham estate, he was surrounded by a gang of youths. He was stabbed to death by the Predi brothers and members of the Untouchables, a small but old set within Peckham. During trial, it was stated that one of the Predi brothers had broken or had possession of a recently broken beer bottle, Mr. Temple told the court. The brother holding the broken bottle thrust it into Damiola Taylor's inner left thigh. Both the brothers were streetwise beyond their age, but neither chose to come to his aid. Instead, both, after a brief pause, walked off. Now, Ricky and Danny Predi were convicted of Damiola's killing. The pair were jailed for eight years after being found guilty. These grown men did that to a 10 year old? Guilty of manslaughter. Now, in 2003, the Man first slaughter. civil war in Peckham kicked off because the Peckham boys were divided over the presence of Mender. Now, Mender was from Lucian size, but defected from the ghetto boys and started rolling with Peckham. Some young Peckham boys trusted him and some didn't, claiming that he was still rolling with the ghetto boys and even robbed a Peckham member. This caused tension between Peckham members, which included stabbings. So he flipped sides and some of the sides he flipped to 
Didn't trust them. Okay. Now in September 2003, Menda was stabbed to death while posted outside of Old Kent Road McDonald's by some young Peckham boy members. Now Peckham legend Tipsy was released from prison after doing three years of a 10 year sentence for firearm offences. Soon afterwards, in July 2004, he was rammed off his motorcycle by a gunman on Camberwell High Street, who then stood over him and gave him five shots to the head. His murder remains unsolved to this day. In October 2004, the Urban Music Awards was held at the Barbican Centre. Peckham Boys and Ghetto Boy members were local and had a shootout outside of the venue, in which 18 shots were fired. The first ever shootout within London Square Mile Financial District, one of the world's financial centres. Miraculously, Helen Kelly was struck. And it probably ain't been a, in a, it probably ain't been nothing held there since then. Was saved by the underwiring in her bra, which deflected a bullet away from her chest oh, wow. into her right breast. Now, Linton Ambersley, 28 from Lucian, South East London, was jailed for 12 years at the Old Bailey after admitting wounding with intent. Tyrone Headley, 28 from New Cross, South East London, was jailed for two years at the Old Bailey for assisting an offender. Now, in 2005, the Peckham Boys, known as Black Gang due to their gang's association with the colour black, from the mid 2000s, the main Peckham sets also began going by other aliases. The Peckham Boys became known as Spare No One, aka SN1. The younger Peckham Boys became known as Shoot Instant, also known as SI. The younger, younger Peckham Boys became known as the Peckham Young Gunners. Now, in the early 2000s, SN1 member Giggs, also known as Giggler, was released from Brixton Prison after serving a couple of years for firearm possession. He dabbled in music in the past, but his jail time made it more determined to take music seriously. Not long afterwards, SN1 released their first project, the Bloody Raw mixtape. At a time when grime was a dominant sound of music in the street, Gig's style was very different from his time and ushered in a new era of rap. In 2005, four young Peckham Boy members aged no comment. between 14 and 16. Burt's Tiny Rider, Timmy and Diamond stormed the christening on the Wood Dean Estate in order to rob the attendees and pay back a debt to Big Larry, who was a Peckham older. During the robbery, Burt shot his gun in the air and a ricochet bullet hit a woman in the head, killing her. Unfortunately, a couple weeks later, Burt ambushed Ruthless, an 18-year-old high-ranking female in Peckham and stabbed her to death for disrespecting him. Burt was given a 30-year prison sentence for the two murders, now, Ryder, Timmy and Diamond were given manslaughter sentences for the christening incident and were deported after their sentences. Ruthless was a love person in Peckham. In this 2006 camera film footage, you can see young Peckham members paying their respects at her grave. In the early 2008, Giggs released a Ruthless freestyle titled in her honour. Let me, the Ruthless is flip graveyard, innit? Uh, rest in peace, innit? Good die young. You can see Shua. There's Rat G, nigga Cheeks, get me, going to pay our respects, one of the rootless, get me, rest in peace, get me, just peddling this rule like that, on the ground, yeah. the rootless is here, Cheeks. Dude in the gray tracksuit, <laughs> he got his mountain bike on the lowest setting. Look how fit fast his feet, feet pedaling. And yeah. the rootless is here. <laughs> she, she, be, she be whipping from, I don't know. <laughs> she be whipping. It's nothing, can it? Shooter. <laughs> INK. Hair now. The graveyard, nigga rootless. Oh, that the sun, see it beaming down on our grave, so see it with the little black bandana and that, see it. Now in September 2006, a group of up to 40 Shoot Instant members went out on a ride out to the Woodpecker Estate in New Cross, the main Ghetto Boys block. 
A brother of Ghetto member Smiley and Craver ended up getting shot and stabbed to death. Another man was attacked in nearby Deptford but survived. At this point, prominent members of Shoot Instant included Snap Capone, Killer Kai, Nutty, Butch, Blacks, Billy the Kid, Taz, Prover, Capo, Ross, etc. I feel like the only name I recognize was Snap. Now in February 2007, another fatal incident occurred. 21-year-old Javari Crichton and 15-year-old Michael Dusumbu were murdered in internal Peckham disputes over money. Members of the group had successfully pulled off bank robberies and were arguing about the split of the proceeds. Michael Dusumbu was shot dead in his bed in a case of mistaken identity. The gunman had meant to get his older brother, who they believed didn't give him their fair share. Now this continued and on the 3rd of February, Javari Crichton, 21, and his friend Sonoa confronted Maiden outside his Peckham home and demanded their share. Maiden lost his temper and stabbed Crichton to death before running away, only to hand himself in to the police a few days later. Now the boss of Peckham was none other than Raver. In July 2007, he was caught in possession of a Mac-10 submachine gun, three handguns, two silencers, 379 rounds of ammunition and thousand pounds worth of drugs. Raver was a Peckham boss and very damn, close to Giggs. Raver is referred to as Carlton in Giggs lyrics. He received a minimum of a 10 year sentence. Now as most gangs go, the young- He got caught with all that and only got 10 years. He had the best lawyer in the UK, period. 100%. Youngers always look up to their olders and go to insane lengths to impress them. It was the case of this when 14 year old PYG member Young Spen shot a man in Peckham for disrespecting him. He was convicted of attempted murder the following year and jailed on an indeterminate sentence. In October 2007, there was a shootout widely reported involving Ghetto Boys and Peckham Boy members. During the shootout, a Polish nurse was hit by a stray bullet and died. Tragic and reoccurring theme of innocence. 26 being years in old. Now the police caught Innocent. a ghetto member known as Turner. He was one participant in a shootout, but he didn't actually fire the fatal shot. Toner did not snitch on the person he was having a shootout with. The Supreme Court decided to convict Turner of the murder as if he fired the fatal shot, even though he didn't. Now in English law, this landmark ruling is known as RV Ganango. Now in December 2007, I feel like if he, he might could have beat that. Giggs dropped the Hard Body mixtape in collaboration with Dubs. This mixtape included Talking the Hardest and Pain is the Essence, which are considered all time UK anthems, alongside multiple hood classics. It changed the UK rap scene forever, and it was the first time that UK road rap broke into the mainstream and marked the shift in general popularity. I will say, I like Talking the Hardest. I did a reaction to it, but they won't let me post it. So, I tried though. I do like that song from Giggs, Talking the Hardest. It might be. Probably like one of two songs that I only like from gigs, but Larity from Grime to UK rap. Ed Sheeran tweeted in June 2010, Art Bodies, it's emotional right now. Burner Boy tweeted in June 2014, Dub slash gigs, pain is the essence. This is a song that saw me through the darkest and hardest times of my life. It's hard to underestimate the impact Art Body had on the culture. Never it had youngers in every block wanted to rap that gang shit and rep their block through music. Now in 2008, the Shoot Instant set split into two branches. The Shoot Instant members based on the Ellsbury estate, such as Snap Capone, remained as SI. And the Shoot Instant members based in Peckham Blotch, such as Killer Kai, etc. They formed OPB. For a few years, the Ghetto Boys had undergone major internal divisions, including the murder of leader Sparks in 2006 by another Ghetto member. These events caused a big shift in street politics in South London, with Lucian dividing and fighting amongst itself. Now by 2008, the decades long beef between Peckham and Ghetto Boys was over. The end of the beef was publicly announced by Giggs when he dropped the Ruthless Freestyle in early 2008. This was a major moment in South London street history, with maybe the bloodiest gang war London has seen officially coming to a close. From that moment, it became safe to play Giggs music publicly in Lucian. The Metropolitan Police were determined to stop Giggs' career in music, despite being the hottest artist in the streets. Venues weren't allowed to book him, and television and radio were pressured not to play his music. Now in the early 2008- That's crazy when, when they do that to artists, like, 
Brother, what do you want? You want me back in these streets? Or you want me to try to elevate myself and elevate a bunch of people with me to get them off your streets as well? Like, what do you want from me? Lil Wayne was arguably the hottest rapper in the world. And in March, he had the headline concert in London. Giggs was booked as the opening act for Lil Wayne and the sold out crowd were there to see Giggs as much as they were there to see Wayne. At the last minute, the police blocked Giggs from performing. The crowd was so angry that they started moving unruly. Lil Wayne was hit with a bottle and stormed off stage, cancelling the show. I remember this. I remember this. That's like insult to injury. First gigs, now you did that, now you gonna walk off. It's tough. With the war between Ghetto and Peckham over, the war between Brixton, OC slash Gas Gang and Peckham Shoot Instance slash Peckham Young Gunners started cracking in 2008. The summer there was back and forth shootings between OC and Shoot Instant members. In one incident, OC rolled out on Woolworth Road and caught Snap Capone and Butch slipping. Snap and Butch ran into a cost cutter store and OC shot at them from the outside but ended up killing a civilian. That made big media headlines. The article, The Telegraph, teenagers shot in Costco a supermarket in London. Not long afterward, OC and gas members released a response detailing the event on the song Gunshot Rhythm, in which OC members mocked Snap and Butch for running. Remember when I blew, we all went low. Talking to Smash Store, but you didn't find nothing. Had you running in the shop like you're buying something. <laughs> Now remember, like any wars, not mm. only could they end, and if I ain't got the thing on me, I'm running too. Well done. Enemies could one day become allies, and this was the case in August 2008. Killer Kai, OPP, erased the link up of Peckham Boys and Ghetto Boy members for the Nottingham Hill Carnival. Up to 180 members from both gangs linked up and started making their way to the carnival, but the police stopped them before they could reach it. Police stopped many troublemakers getting there. 150 youths were arrested in South London after tip-offs. They were all detained, preventing them from travelling. Amongst the weapons... <laughs> well, y'all tried to go 150 deep to Carnival? Like, 150 deep? All at like, one moment instead of going like in pieces and meeting up? Yeah, this is bound to get broken up. It's confiscated. 25 knives, a baseball bat. Wait, how many? What? 150 youths were arrested in South London after tip-offs. They were all detained, preventing them from travelling. Amongst the weapons confiscated, 25 knives, a baseball bat and a Tazar gun. However, for most of the million-plus visitors to Carnival, it was purely for fun and celebration. In October 2008, emergency services were called to the scene on Black Prince Road shortly before 1pm where armed police officers were seen guarding the road outside a local pub. 20-year-old SN1 member Terms was shot dead as he left his house by Brixton Olders. One local living on the Ethel Red housing estate said they heard at least 5 shots in what they described as a hail of gunfire. I looked into the road and there was this kid lying in the street with two push bikes either side of him. Then all hell broke loose as the police with guns arrived with an ambulance and a helicopter, the witness said. And it didn't take long for there to be a response. And on the 5th of October at 5.40am, SN1 member infiltrated C1 nightclub and spotted Sense OC, real name Errol Davis. The SN1 gunman walked up on him and shot him dead at close range. A post-mortem took place at Greenwich Mortuary on Monday and gave the cause of death as a gunshot wound to the head.
Now SN1 were getting busy, not just to their Brixton rivals, but in-house beef too. In February 2009, a Peckham older known as Big Larry was shot dead by SN1 in Dulwich in broad day. He had fallen out with the Peckham members over time, resulting in his execution. No one was ever arrested over the killing. On the 2nd of November 2009, at about 6.50pm near Ambergate Street, close to Kennington Underground Station. Yeah, I feel like internal beef always like fractures the like uh, foundation of almost anything. Police officers and ambulance crews discovered a 22-year-old man later identified as Daniel Duke suffering gunshot wounds. He was treated at the scene before being taken to a South London hospital where he died in the early hours of Tuesday morning. A post-mortem examination gave the cause of death as a gunshot wound to the chest. He was known as Mima on the streets, an MOB member which stood for Mandem on Brandon, a set based on a Brandon estate in SC17 postcode. Peckham's own shoot instant member Snap and Tem went on trial for the murder. I think this is Skyboy's longest documentary yet. 40 minutes? Hopefully he didn't get yellow marked. What? But beat the case. The reason why this murder is important is because over the next few years, the relationships between the Brandon Estate and Peckham morphed into one of the biggest storylines in UK drill. Under Brandon Estate, Moscow became the new generation of MOB. Here are some familiar faces and tweets of Moscow members saluting MOB. Now Naughty Shoe Instant was on remand in prison on a firearm charge after being caught purchasing guns out of town. A 17 year old called Samuel Ogonro was also facing charges but got bail. He was offered money to take the gun charge but refused to do so. Because of this, the execution of Samuel was arranged so he wouldn't speak at the trial. In June 2010, Samuel was shot dead in a car in Peckham just before the trial was due to start. A few days later, the car was set on fire with his body inside. Nutty was given 32 years in prison Dang. for arranging a murder and CSPYG was given 4 years for setting the car on fire. However, no one was ever convicted of actually shooting Samuel dead. One of the Peckham boys blocks was the Let Some Estate. Oh, for ordering it, he got 32 years? Camberwell. And many prominent Peckham boy members came from there. Shower Malik, Young Size, Young Shack, etc. Over time, there were growing risks between senior members from Let Some and senior members from Main Peckham. The tension started around 2008 times, but grew over time escalating into the Peckham Civil War. Members from Letsom Estate split from their Peckham sets and formed the Letsom G's. From this point, Peckham v Letsom was a very hot war. I can't mention the specifics of what happened in this period, but there were multiple shootings and stabbings between members. Now with all this turmoil, the remaining PYG members, such as M1, CS, Tiny Snap, Young Terms, etc, flipped its name to Anti. They rode closely with GMG members, such as Jungle, Moe Black, Deej, etc, another young set within the Peckham Boys family. Bro really did his homework. Now on the 6th of September 2010, PYG members shot up Let Some Estate. Thankfully, no one was injured. However, shortly after, Taz OPB was killed after his motorcycle was ran by a car in Peckham. Hours later, Little Graham, real name Rio McFarlane, who was now a Let's Up member, went to visit the makeshift shrine for his friend Taz to pay his respects. However, when he got there, he was murdered in a drive-by shooting. Little Graham was friends with professional footballer Rio Ferdinand. Now Snap, real name Leon Perret, 25 of Camberwell, South London, who was the older of Snap Capone, was found guilty of the murder of Little Graham and was jailed for a minimum of 35 years, while the actual Man, shoot he's still gone. remained free. At around late 2010, new and gang members from Plasto, Chad Green Estate to the exact, violated the yard of a Peckham member's relative in Newham. In retaliation, two Peckham boy members, SN1 member and an anti member, slid to Newham and shot dead 16 year old Sammy Guns in October 2010. Another CGE member was also shot but survived. Now, with the ongoing turmoil of the Peckham Civil War, the Crane Block began beefing with the main Peckham sets. Here is a Crane Block music video from the summer 2010. In December 2010, Vest Crane Block. So I'm getting a lot of like songs I should be listening to. This is old though. This is how long? 14 years? Star Tiny Mantis and Cookie were posted on a Crane Block. That night, Vesta ended up getting shot to death with Tiny Mantis and Cookie getting stabbed. 
As the police investigated the murder, hundreds of stop snitching leaflets were posted around the crane block. Tiny Nutty, who was an anti-member, and John Gould, who was a GMG member, were convicted of the murder. Tiny Nutty received a minimum of 26 year sentence and Jungle received a minimum 30 years on the testimony of Cookie. Now Kai's SN1 was sent to prison for 6 years for a shooting. He was caught when his conversations at Belmarsh prison were recorded by the police. Kai's had been charged for a double murder. The murders of Sense and Big Larry who were both shot and killed by the same gun he was given 6 years for. But despite that he beat both those cases at the trial. In June 2011, Snap Capone was given a six year prison sentence for the possession of a handgun. He was credited for the time spent on remand while fighting for the murder case in 2010. Now Josie was a loved Gascon member, extremely tight with Sneakbo. Sadly at the age of 17, he died in a motorway crash. Things got more tragic at his funeral when Peckham anti-member was local. Things got hectic and he shot up the funeral. Two people got shot and one died. The murder remains unsolved. The Metropolitan. So they were shooting up christenings, funerals, every, nothing was off limits. The police were officially criticised for not patrolling the funeral. Despite it being considered a high risk event, they didn't provide any police presence. Now, Boost SN1 was from the same generation as Raver and Knuckles and is the older of Young Boost. Like many Peckham Boy members that had gone to jail, he ended up getting deported from the UK. Now, in 2012, Nutcase, who later became Quenface, and Preacher, who later became PS, and other youngs from. Oh wow! What? Bro looks literally the same. Quenface, who later became Quenface, and Preacher, who later became PS, and other. Don't PS wear a mask? So we, I don't even know. Other youngs from Peckham dropped several freestyles on the YouTube channel MMTV. Their earliest releases before the days of Zone Two. In February 2012, Giggs was riding through South London with three others when police stopped their car. They searched it and found it a loaded semi-automatic gun. All four people were charged with gun possession and Giggs was remanded in prison. Following his trial, Giggs was acquitted of all charges and released. Giggs tweeted in August 2012, God is great, big thanks to the jury for recognising my innocence. Now Siege... Shout out to your lawyer too, that boy was thorough who used to be known as Young Killer Kai, was an original member of Peckham Young Gunners. However, he fell out with Peckham members during a trial involving him and Young Butch. At this time, the Peckham boys were fragmenting as a gang, a direct consequences of the Peckham Civil War. Siege and other Peckham members, including Slumps, rose up a new Peckham set called Bread Set and started dropping music under that name. In 2012, Breadset were very active with the music releases. In October 2012, armed police raided Breadset members, including Siege, finding various guns, including an M16 assault rifle. The police also seized £40,000 worth. Where did, where did they get this from? It's the most high tech firearm that I've seen any street member have in this video, at least. They normally get the MAC 10 as the top. This M16 is crazy, though worth of drugs. Now in October 2013, Deej, GMG and Brantz, Anti, went to the Oceana nightclub and got into an argument with Bullet, who was a member of H-Block in West London. Bullet ended up getting stabbed to death in the club, with Deej and Brantz getting sent to prison for murder. Now you remember Young Rev, the GMG member, who ended up having a retrial over the 2011 murder of Daniel Graham in Dulwich. Well, his 22 year murder conviction got overturned. This was his first release after a bus case. In February 2014, Sykes, aka Tiny Giggs, was stabbed to death in Stockwell by Team Raw members after an ongoing argument escalated. It was a messed up situation because Stockwell and the Peckham boys were long term allies. In Giggs' famous Walk in the Park tape on the track titled Cut Up the Bag, he mentions Tiny Giggs. Tiny gigs, tiny boots, yeah they're rolling with me Now many of you may have heard of Naira Mali, a big artist in Africa and was first known for being key in the pioneering of the Afro bashment scene in the UK Although born in Nigeria, he moved to Peckham in 2005 where he oh, He made a good move for that style of music. Some music Putting on for the Queen's Road section of Peckham alongside Max Twigs He was the first in Peckham to consistently release drill in the track NMCB, they shouted out 365, the original name of Zone 2. Now Cash, 
also known as Castastic, is an artist that grew up in Peckham and has collaborated multiple times with Peckham members. With his growing popularity in the UK scene, he signed a publishing deal with Universal Records in 2013. In the midst of his success, Cash fell victim to the UK government's hostility and environment policy towards immigrants. Cash was born in Jamaica and moved to the United Kingdom at the age of six. The government's border agency stated that despite living the majority of his life here, Cash had no right to be in the country. He was detained in March 2014 and deported to Jamaica two weeks later. That's spooky. I know he had family out there, but bro don't know nothing about Jamaica except what he hear on phone calls and what his mom and told him. Are they deported? Now, Mo Quenga was a member from the Owsbury estate. In September 2015, he was chased by 30 members from China Walk and was stabbed to death at the age of 16. Zone 2 and Walworth slash Kennington were still cool and members from Peckham honoured the passing of Mo. Around this time, Quengface and Trizak, who were both Zone 2 members, appeared in Incognito's Rico music video released in November 2015. This era was the last time that young Peckham and Woolworth members had good relations. In March 2016, Snap Capone was given a six year prison sentence for drug trafficking. He was convicted for being the leader of a punchline operation between London and Southampton. Now, the beef between Moscow and Zone that? 2 started heating up in 2016, with multiple violations flying. A couple of examples being in April 2016, Lou Screw was stabbed and left bleeding in Maine Peckham. Ramps was stabbed at Burgess Park in June 2016 and was airlifted to hospital. And Ned was stabbed at Campbell or McDonald's in July 2016. There are more violence. One thing I'm always paying attention to is McDonald's. Every time I hear McDonald's, there's always some negative. So when I go to the UK, don't it, I'm not going to McDonald's. For what? Once again, not going to McDonald's or Shell gas station. I got no business at either. <laughs> you feel me? relations that flew between Zone 2 and Moscow and their affiliates, but that's enough to give an idea of how it was cracking between the two sides. Now on New Year's Eve, another case of the Peckham Civil War, Robbo aka Tiny Blacks was stabbed to death in Peckham. He was chased through Peckham before being caught and killed. The death was a result of the internal dispute within the ends. Tiny Blacks was a loved member in Peckham and appeared in various Billy the Kid music videos. Now in December 2016, GB along with Lou Screw released a UK jewel hit Moscow March which became a staple in UK yeah. jewel culture. As See well this is about the time where I started reacting to music. Well as a certified classic. Now staying on the topic of music, in March 2017 Drake dropped a More Life project with two tracks featuring gigs. Drake had been aware of gigs in music and the underground UK rap scene in general from the 2000s as Drake is commercially the biggest artist in the world this gave gigs the exposure to wide international audience and was massive for Peckham. From being blacklisted by the police to now having a song with the biggest artist in the world. As for the new generation, well Zone 2 members were active in UK drill in 2017. The year cemented their popularity as one of the most popular groups in London. Now 2017 will be the year the beef between- Oh my god, the good old days man. A real, like when drill was at its peak was beginning its ascend what is it ascend to its peak and then it was just a crazy you know what i'm saying in moscow and zone 2 went to another level fence sitting was no longer an option now ab's real name abdurrahman Mohammed, an innocent who many claim was affiliated well Abs was approached by two Moscow members in Incognito and Jet Black outside a chicken shop in Peckham on Southampton Way and stabbed in the chest. The suspects fled the scene. 17 year old Abdurrahman Mohammed from Camberwell was heard yelling for help after being stabbed in the chest in the 2nd of June 2017. Police and paramedics were called to the scene at about 11.15 pm but he was pronounced dead within minutes. One eyewitness who worked at Tesco Damn. supermarket meters from the crime scene told the news I saw him shout help me help me then collapsed. Two people with the young man a white lady and a black boy I thought they were joking around at first then I saw blood on the floor and his friend was saying talk to me talk to me. A post-mortem examination held at Greenwich Mortuary on June 3rd gave the cause of death as a stab wound to the chest. Detective Chief Inspector Diane Tudway, who leads the Mets Homicide and Major Crime Command, said the family were utterly devastated. 
Both Incognito and Jet Black were shortly charged with murder and put on trial at the Old Bailey. To defend their case, Jet Black and Incognito went with the angle that the witness was a friend of Abs and he falsely identified them on the purpose of an ongoing grudge. Despite their... That's not gonna work. Uh, Jet Black got the perfect nickname, boy. Buddy is really Jack Black. That's tough. Being some CCTV footage of the witness testimony, the jury believed the defense and acquitted both Jack Black and Incognito of murder. Now Moscow 17 rapper and gang member GB was part of a BBC documentary which portrayed some of his life. In 2016 he was stabbed in the chest, narrowly missing his heart when he went to Peckham. Soon after GB was sent to Jamaica by his family to protect him. His uncle Sean looked after him while he was there, he was taken to the studio to express himself. However, GB got tired of living in Jamaica, he missed his life back home in London, so returned. Within three months of his return, he was dead. And this is how it happened. On the 5th of May 2018, armed police responded to reports of gunshots on Cook's Road at about 6 p.m. on Saturday and found GB injured nearby on Warham. Where did he get hit? Medics from London Ambulance Service and Air Ambulance gave first aid, but he was pronounced dead just before 7 p.m. Two Zone 2 members, age 17 and 20, were arrested on suspicion of murder in June 2018, but nobody has ever been charged. Zone 2 had their get back and were free. Moscow members mourned the death of GB. His people were out on the streets marching while singing along to his hit song, Moscow March, and other Moscow members dropped tribute songs in his honor. Now things were bad for Moscow and it only got worse. On the 1st of August, 2018, Moscow member Incognito, along with his younger, robbed a man known as Kenneth Umezi for his Cartier watch. Shortly after giving his watch, he then chased Incognito stabbing him twice. Unfortunately, Incognito died from shock and blood loss. Now, despite being charged with murder initially, Kenneth Umezi was acquitted of murder and had an alternative charge of manslaughter, manslaughter following a two week trial at the Old Bailey. Mr. Umezi told jurors GB was fating a knife in the course of a struggle after he gave chase in a bid to retrieve his watch. He insisted that GB was stabbed accidentally as he acted out in self defense. The jury bought this and he was now a free man. Pretty yeah. fitting that GB beat a murder case only for his killer to beat his case. Now on the 11th of June 2018, Damn. Zone 2 boss D Squeezo and his younger Little D Squeezo approached 18 year old trapper known as SJ. Shortly after D Squeezo stabbed him to death and sped away from the scene. The following year D Squeezo and Little D Squeezo were jailed for his murder. I hope everybody is getting a, getting a picture of this though. It don't matter how successful you are in the game, how much you doing in the streets, you're gonna die, or you're gonna go to jail. You can't be in there and 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 still trying to rap because it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. Now, D Squeezo, that make your ops want to get you going hard more intensely. You know? Real name: Denilson Davis was sentenced to a minimum of 21 years while his younger got 15 years. Now in 2019, a fictionalized version of the Ghetto Boys v Peckham Boys War was portrayed in the film Blue Story. The movie follows two friends that grew up on rival sides of the war. The film however was banned from many cinemas in the United Kingdom because of its gang content and instigating violence, but it was still a box office success. On the 8th of December 2019, Zone 2 oh, members yeah, released the track No Censor, arguably the rudest song. Here it is. My channel got a, 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 a strike for this. Community guideline strike for this. I remember it like it was yesterday. I posted this video two, three days later. Community guideline strike. It was tough. In UK drill history, in which they listened. Couldn't post for a week the dead members from Moscow and Harlem Spartans, including the pioneering use of the sonic ring effects. For I couldn't believe it. What did I do? Added disrespect, which was later adopted by many other drill artists. 
Despite going viral and trending on social media, the video was deleted by the police from YouTube a few hours after it was uploaded. Now Zone 2 member Snoop was a certified stepper. He was known for shooting Screw Loose and stabbing him, as well as being present at a murder. He hated his ops with a passion, always on Snapchat posting Moscow members and taunting them. Many rumours that he was also the one to splash acid in Screw Loose's face, causing these nasty scars. Now in 2000 Your ops have to hate you to do this to you Hitman appreciate you for the follow You are hated Discuss. Oh my god Now in 2020, Quangface's career oh. went to another level. He was very consistent, dropping various solo tracks and routinely breaking 1 million views. He was the face of Zone 2 musically and the only one with global appeal. Quangface was focused and prospering. This would however change when he went out on a date with his girl when he was called lacking by Erna, a Woolly O member which is a gang in Woolwich that are linked with Harlem Spartans. Erna managed to drop Quangface with a punch and recorded him getting up, later uploading on Snapchat. Now you know when rappers catch L's like this, they always feel the need to win their pride back. So Quangface had Snoop, Trizak and Scatty from Zone 2 carry out the get back. Snoop would go to Erna's house, however Erna wasn't present, so he broke in while Erna's mother was present, threatened and then exited before shooting the front door. Quangface paid them. 1,500 each appreciate the while file. carrying out the bank transfer it allows you to put down a reference stupidly Quangface wrote get back gang literally detailing the reason of why he's why would Quangface do that send them the money police also later discovered he used his own phone to book the taxi to take them to Erna's house Quangface was charged and sentenced to five years after he pleaded guilty it's rumoured because of Quangface taking this guilty plea, Snoop and the rest will get a lighter sentence. Now young Peckham I never knew that was the details of it all, but that was dumb. There was a lot of stupidity here. Boy rapper that. Gully, who has worked with Zone 2 on many tracks, has been making waves in the UK draw scene in recent years. He has amassed a loyal following and racked up millions of streams on his YouTube music videos. He has taken music seriously, especially with visuals like this. Yo, yo, I hear sirens wailing. Uh, oh, uh, oh. Unfortunately, <laughs> he would throw that all away. Now on the 16th of July yeah, 2022, 19-year-old Jeremiah LJ Swell of the rival B-Side gang was sitting in his car when at 4 a.m. Gully pulled up. I just want to let everybody know, since Gully, like there's no more creativity out there like this. It's rare. There is, but it's rare. Black Astra before approaching LJ. They're all gone or in jail. And asking him what ends he was from. LJ replied, I'm a b-boy. Gully instantly stabbed him in the neck twice and left. Despite LJ managing to transport himself to the hospital, he sadly died from his injuries later that evening. Now Gully was arrested literally a day later. He went on Instagram live as police came to his house. I'm naked. Can I address? Towels, I'm naked. There's clothes in the living room. Keep, keep coming down. Keep coming down. There's clothes in the living room. Let me get dressed, down. man. Keep coming down. Keep coming down. Let me get dressed. Look, keep I'm dressed. Down. I'm dressed. Let me Stop get there. dressed. Stop there. Stop there. Oh my god. Stop. Mad. Take two steps forward. Take two steps forward. Boss. I'm not listen, moving. Listen, listen, Godfrey, you're under arrest for murder. Okay? I'm listen not exactly what I'm saying. Put I'm the phone moving. on that radiator. Put the phone on the radiator. Do not make any sudden move. Bro, I'm naked. Put your hands on your head. Insert your fingers on your head. Nice and slowly. You've got a taser still on your back. Walk backwards to me. To my voice. Walk backwards. What? Backwards. Backwards. Slowly. Mate, I'll sort that in a second. Still taser on your back. Keep walking. Stop. Stop. Put your hands on top of your head. They are on top gone. of your head. Insert your fingers. That's how I be trying to tell people. Drill is not dead. Just Everybody's just locked up. Or a, a deceased. So it's, you know, the music ain't there no more. Everybody else that's doing it now, they switch their flow or they, or it's just people capping and you don't really want to hear that. Taser, yeah? Slowly, slowly, step to your left. Step to your left. Step to your left. Keep stepping, keep stepping, keep stepping. Yeah, step on them, step on them stones. Wait there. One more step. Thank you, 
What is this pointing at? This? Oh, it's probably pointing at the radiator. Monkey person number 29! Come to the front door and present yourself! Now, Gully relied on two girls Bro, was I with one of them telling the other to wash it at 90 degrees and how to wash it. She threw it in the bin and the police seized Gully's tracksuit, which wow. had Jeremiah's blood on it. The police also found the car that was used. Gully, that was stupid. Why would you do depend on anybody? You should have did it yourself if that was the case. Hypothetically speaking, you should have did it yourself. And traced it back to Peckham. They also used CCTV and traced it back to the chicken shop in Peckham. Gully was later found guilty and sentenced to a minimum of 24 years in prison. The young boys in Peckham, like every generation, were out of control. Violence over the littlest of things is a common theme. This was no different in this generation. See, when Peckham black gang members Alex Morris and Marvin Ward agreed to buy a Canada Goose jacket from a seller online, they met up with Hussein who gave them the jacket. Alex tried it on and said it didn't fit, asking if he had a different size which Hussein replied yes to. Now Alex and Marvin along with two of Hussein's friends went into his home. However, the two Peckham Black Gang members backed out their knives and started threatening Hussein. While this was going on, Hussein's mother, who was away at the time, managed to walk in during the robbery. Seeing this, Hussein leapt into action to protect his mother and a struggle ensued. This followed into the streets where sadly Hussein was fatally stabbed in the neck while his mother suffered serious injury to her thumb. The two members fled and hid out in another black gang member's house in Luton. Over known a as Canada Anthony Goose. Luton. Over All a three jacket. were arrested and charged, but were denied charges put forward against them. Anthony was found guilty of assisting an offender. However, Marvin and Alex were found guilty of manslaughter and robbery of Hussein and not murder, as well as wounding with an intent on Hussein's mother. Both Alex and Marvin were jailed for 20 years each. Now this brings me to the end of the- 20 years for, for a Canada Goose, was it worth it? If I bet you, it ain't worth that. This tragic video. As usual, I send my condolences to the family of everyone I mentioned. Please like and subscribe. Yeah, 100% RIP to everybody. Like I said though, man, like none of this stuff be worth it at the end of the day. Cause now look at the state of drill and look at all the, all the artists. They all gone. And when I say gone, they either in jail or in the ground. Tell them leave a like, comment, I'm gone.